Okay, recap what we have uh, done uh, before the New Year break, right? So before this, we talk about time series method and we have covered exponential smoothing um, with an equation, with this equation, f equal to f plus ft plus one equal to alpha dt plus one minus alpha ft. So this is a, a smoothing method uh, specific for time series, uh, for time series uh, method. So you can see here, you will use the forecast. Uh, this equation is to reproduce the forecast, right? It's to produce the forecast value for next month, right? By using demand value and forecast value of current month. Okay? You use current month uh, demand and demand D and forecast T, right? Current month um, for next month focus. And usually when we start this calculation, we will use the first month demand for the forecast. Huh? So we have uh, done one exercise in example number three. Right? We have plot some graph. And we have been uh, seeing what is the effect of changing the alpha, the smoothing con uh, constant, right? The smoothing constant over here, right? Let's see, I guess. Uh, So previously we calculated the alpha by using the forecast value, uh, forecast equation. This one. So usually this one, the objective is to find the. Uh, you are given a pool of uh, data, and then you find the next month for forecast. All right. Um, one final year. Uh, one final exam will be from chapter three, confirm will come out already. So make sure you study well and understand what is the exponential smooth uh, forecast. The equation won't be given, so you won't find the equation in the final exam um, uh, paper. So we expect you to memorize this one. Yeah? So basically for um, this module, it won't, the, the formula that you use in this module won't be uh, as complex as those you study in your finite element, uh, finite element analysis or your final year other engineering module. Eh? Okay, so um, previously we stopped at this, uh, this chart and you can see that when you change your alpha value from 0.3 to 0.5. So as you change, if you increase your alpha, the line of forecasting is very near to the real data. This one, okay. However, you need to be careful when you go out there to work later on. Uh, do not do not start with a very heavy value. Huh? You can start with 0.2, then you start increasing 0.4. 0.6 and so on. Then you start to see whether either you over weighted or you too light uh, weighted. Okay. Um, yeah. And as you uh, practice through a few cycle, basically you are you have one reference value for you to do forecasting. Okay, previously we stopped at here. Okay, so at this chart. And um, later on, we will continue to use 0.5 for our analysis. Yeah. Um, so we also cover adjusted exponential smoothing. So today we look at adjusted exponential smoothing. Adjusted Exponential smoothing you use A, F, uh, means uh, this is just a notation, 
A doesn't mean anything, F doesn't mean anything. So we just, uh, because this method, we are using adjusted exponential smoothing. Uh, that's why we put A to represent adjusted. And the rest, uh, this one FT plus one is a next month focus or next focus. So A, F, T plus one is adjusted exponential smoothing equation. Uh, as you can see here, it's way more simpler compared to the previous one, right? Um, here, adjusted exponential smoothing, he used um, the estimated forecast next month and plus the trend of next month. So we need two, two information for adjusted exponential smoothing. He need to look at trend, he need to look at forecast value. So as you can see, if the question asks you to use adjusted exponential smoothing, uh, you need to build a, a quite a big table. Um, however, you won't get 12 data, like 12 month data. We will reduce the data for you uh, just to prove to us you know what to what is adjusted exponential smoothing, right? So you need to redesign your table accordingly. Yeah? So this will be the uh, today new equation for today. A F T plus one equal to F uh, T plus one means the next month forecast. T sub T plus one means uh, next month trend. Uh, so there is an equation for calculating the trend. So to calculating the trend is capital T sub T plus one and a rest of uh, equation. But in this case, because we want to differentiate with the earlier exponential smoothing, we use alpha. In this case, because we don't, do we want to avoid the confusion. So uh, we have a constant value here also. We change the alpha into beta. It's still a constant, right? So since alpha already used for exponential smoothing, so when it comes to adjusted exponential uh, smoothing, we change the constant become alpha, uh, sorry, become beta. So beta bracket plus one minus beta. So the first component here is forecast component. Second component here is the trend. So it's like, it's a follow, it will follow the general equation for adjusted exponent, uh, exponential smoothing. So the first one you see FT plus one means um, the future forecast, right? Or the forecast next month minus the current month forecast plus the trend, okay? Plus the trend. Okay. So these are the two equation that we will look at for today. Adjusted exponential smoothing you have two, then we will apply this equation and this equation uh, back to the original data that we look at in the previous example. Okay, we use the same data, but we now we use adjusted exponential smoothing equation for that. Then we look, then we compare what is the difference between adjusted exponential and normal exponential smoothing. So I'll let you copy the equation first. Okay, copy, yeah. Because later the table have a lot of data and I believe each one of you have the opportunity to answer the question. Uh, copy now. Huh? So don't give me excuse, sir. I don't have the equation. Huh? And don't let the whole class wait for you. Okay, copy these two equations. Eh? Okay, move on. So we look at example number four. Will be the same as your tutorial handouts. The question still the same. 
still the same company doing computer services, but now the owner want you to use adjusted exponential smooth forecast using the same 12 months demand that you sh that you seen earlier. Now, um, you, you give you the, um, you use the alpha 0.5 value because just now before we start the class, we, sh we revisit the graph that we plot and alpha zero equal to 0 0.5, you get nearer to the real data. So that's why we, uh, we focus on alpha equal to 0 0.5 rather than alpha equal to 0 0.3. Okay, so now we need to use beta trend uh, constant equal to 0 0.3. Okay, so you build a table like this. So I think I give you this table in your tutorial handouts. All right, so you combine with the two equations that I showed you on the screen just now try to fill in all this value. We have 12 months here, so everyone of you have opportunity to answer. Okay. So for this one, uh, the formula for the adjusted exponential smoothing forecast require the initial starting value with this TT. Uh, t so in this case, we will use the first month demand we use the first month demand to start the calculation. Yeah? So trend, because uh, inside this table, you have month, you have demand, you have forecast, T plus one, trend, T plus one, adjusted forecast, A, F, T plus one. So in this case, because the first one January, we don't have the previous month, so we will use T equals zero. And we start filling up this table. Okay. Alpha equal to 0 0.5, beta equal to 0 0.3. We start filling up this, this column, this column, uh, this space, this space, and this space. Again, for the first month, we don't have any trend. So you can put zero or you can just put a dash there. So since you don't have the, uh, you don't have the trend, you're not able to produce the adjusted forecast. And to start using adjusted exponential smooth forecast, you transfer the demand into the first space here. It's a little bit different compared to exponential smooth forecast. Adjusted forecast, adjusted exponential forecast, you move your demand into F sub T plus one. Okay. Then you start calculating the remaining numbers using the formula. Okay, so this is the equation that I asked you to copy just now. Ft plus one, which is the next month forecast. So now you already fill up the information for January. Now you want to do for February. Now you're standing in January. You want to look into February. So this is Ft plus one. So this is number two or you can just write number one, two until the last one. So this is number two. So F2, this is F2, this is F1. This is F1, this is F2. So F2, your T is one. Okay, F2, T is one. So alpha given, D, T is one. Alpha minus, uh, one minus alpha, F, T, T is one. So F2 equal 0 0.5. DT, which is the current month, uh, which is one in this case, because you want to do 
uh, forecast of this one, right? So D1, so demand 1, which is 37. 1 minus alpha, alpha is 0.5. Ft here is F1. Why F1? Because you're in front here is 2. F2, what is your T? F2, 2 equal to T plus 1. Your T is 1. So here is 1. Okay. So you'll get this equation just to calculate this column. Okay, calculate this space. So F2 equal to alpha D1 plus 1 minus alpha F1. So you have alpha, you have D1. D1 is 37. 1 minus alpha F1. What is F1? This one. Where you get F1? You copy from demand, put inside here. These steps only apply for adjusted exponential small forecast. Right? You substitute the value. Okay, substitute the value, press the calculator. You'll get 37.0 service call. Huh? Just for, uh, just a reminder huh? for your test or final exam, when a question asks you to go forecast, do forecast, trend, or any forecast, the number that you calculate here is highly recommended with at least one decimal place. Eh? At least one decimal place for forecast trend value. Eh? So here is 37. You press the calculator. In this case, you will get full number in your calculator. But when you write in the table or in your answer sheet later on, you need to give at least one decimal place for forecast, trend, and forecast value. So here you get the second number is 37. Okay. So, okay. So here I did, I forget to hide this number, but once you get the first uh, number, the first forecast, you calculate for trend and AF. So recall what is your AF equation. AF equal to FT plus 1 equal to FT plus 1 plus T, T plus 1. Before you can calculate this one, you need to calculate the trend. What is the equation for trend? You use the beta value multiply by the forecast plus the beta value and the trend value. Okay, so we just need to know what is this location. This is number two, T1, T2. This is T2, so this one become T2. This one become T2 to calculate this box. So T2, what is your T? Your T is one, so F, T plus 1 is 2, so this is F2 minus F1, 1 minus beta, what is beta, given already by the question, 0.3. What is T, again, look at this one, this is T2, check back, T2, 2 equal, 2 equal to T plus 1, so T is 1, so this is 1. So this one, this this sentence actually are uh, irrelevant now because you are you already started the first one. So basically, this line you you can ignore. Eh? Uh, I I forget to erase this one when I prepare the slides. Basically, when you when we are done the first one, the second row onwards, you don't need this statement anymore. Okay, so you replace the equation. This one become t two because this location is t two. This is one, this is two, okay, T1, T2, you're calculating T2. So T2 equal 0 0.3, F2, F1, 1 minus 0 0.3, T1. Okay, so from the table itself, what is F2? Where I find F2? Here. This is F2, this is F1. So substitute 37 here. 37 here, 
1 minus this one. What is your T1? T1 is this one. You don't have T1. 0. Okay. So this basically 0 plus 0. So your trend number 2 value is 0. Don't be surprised in exam or final uh, exam or test, you get zero as your answer. Don't be surprised, right? So don't confuse yourself, right? Where if you press a calculator and you follow the correct numbers, when you get zero, don't don't confuse yourself, right? They, okay, they sir. yeah, go ahead. Oh, I said okay, sir. Oh, okay, yeah. All right. So just just don't confuse yourself, ah. Uh. Uh, and uh, always check your numbers before you start calculating the third row. Okay, if you've done correctly the first two rows, check already. You are confident with your numbers, then only proceed. Because start from second row, any wrong number of this one, this one, this one, you're going to snowball your error into the rest. So when I check this number, this number, this number, this number in your test or final exam, if one of it wrong already, I don't need to mark anymore. I will just I will just put a question marks. I will circle the wrong one. I basically I don't need to mark. So, so there's no marks for the table or the the whole question can say uh, 25 marks. Maybe uh, if you attempt to answer, maybe you only score two to three marks out of 25. So basically your grade drop a little bit. Huh? So just be careful when it comes to all this uh, calculation. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So you feel it. Um, yeah, again, don't forget about the decimal place. Yeah? Because this is a trend column, focus column, and also focus column. Uh, why I use a double uh, decimal place here is to increase the accuracy of my calculation, right? But you need minimum one, huh? minimum one. Okay, so once you completed your your t plus one calculation, you substitute there. Huh? So you are calculating a f number two, which is here. Okay. This one A F two, so this one F two, this one T two. So you already have your force uh, focus number two with this one. Oh, sorry, this one. You already have your uh, trend number two with this one. So basically, this one plus this one, you get this one. So I I believe from from the second row, you can see the pattern already. When you calculate this one, this one, basically the, the next step is to just to look at the table, take this number plus this number, you get this number. Basically this column uh, is very fast because this column is basically take this one plus this one, you get this one. Okay. Only my concern is either this one you do wrong or you press wrong calculator, press the wrong digit, this one wrong, then all this all wrong, okay? Okay. Now, I want you guys to try March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Okay, so maybe I delegate the job and then see whether you are correct or not. Eh? If you're fast, you can uh, go ahead and uh, calculate. Yeah. Okay. So um, the third month, uh, third month, March. Uh, so uh, Guru, Guru Dashan, you complete March three. Guru Dashan, March in March data. Harry, Harry Sayam, Harry Sayam, you do for April. Uh, Sarini, you do app. Uh, so you do May. Nevin, you do June. Ruben, you do July. Harry Prasad, you do August. 
uh, Muti, you do September. Okay, um, maybe some of you, you need to wait for the previous answer, then only uh, you can calculate because you need the previous number. Yeah, okay. So I will leave the equation there on the screen, um, and you just uh, as a reference. So for March, uh, Guru Dashan, what is your uh, F plus, okay, maybe I need to flip to the previous slides for the forecast. Eh? Okay, so this is the forecast equation. Basically, you are using three equation. So this is the, okay, so this is the, uh, sorry? Yes. Yes. yeah, go ahead. Uh, so for the forecast so is 38.5. 38.5, then trend is what? For much, what is your trend? One minute, sir. The rest you mark down, uh, the numbers. Uh, so the next one is 0 0.45. I don't know how to write it down. Okay, for March. March is 38.85, right? The first one, forecast FT yes, plus one. The trend will be uh, this one. This one for March. What is your answer? 0 0.45, sir. 0 0.45. Is it correct? Okay, never mind. Later we check. AF? A for much? 38.95, sir. Mm, okay. 38.95? Yes, sir. Okay, your forecast March, huh? your March just now is 38.85, right? Correct? Yes, sir. Then your trend. The trend is 0 0.45. Yes, sir, 0 0.5, 0 0.45. 0 0.45. So here you, you have something 0 0.85. Here you have something 0 0.45. How come you get something, what's your answer here? 38.95. Where is the additional 0 0.05 come from? Do you understand how to get AF? Basically, is this one plus this one, you get this number. This one, you 38.85. This one, 0 0.45. Huh? 38.5. This one. For the F. Yes. 38.5. Okay. Ah, then makes sense. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. Let's uh, check again. Eh? Let's check. Your sorry, okay. Then the next one, April Harry Siam. Are you there? So, it's a calculating. <clears throat> So for the forecast is 
40.5, 5 zero, right? 40.5, uh, yes, sir. Okay, what is the trend value? Uh, the trend, hold on, sir. Okay, I'll give you one more minute. Uh, <clears throat> so is it 1.05? 1, 1.05. Okay, then what is your F? Yes, sir. Okay, just now is uh, just now is okay. I'll show you the next number. Eight point five, zero point four, five, and uh, three point. Okay, those uh, watching YouTube, you uh, you can fast forward now when you watch this video, fast forward to the final answer, right? It's going to take a while for this class to solve all the numbers. So the last one is the same value, right? 40.05. Harry, what is your forecast again? Uh, for April, forty point five. How you get forty point five? Can you explain? Uh, at a one of the alpha is zero point five. Okay. And then uh the. Oh. What is your what is your what is your what is your demand? Demand is thirty seven, but then I. Are you sure you are using the 37? I use 41, sir. I saw March 1. <laughs> uh, I think, no, for the forecast is correct. You used, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, for forecast, you use the current month demand. Current oh, month demand? Uh, sorry, sorry, the previous month. The previous month. Uh, previous it means month. you need to use 41 in your calculation. 41, right, sir? Yes. Then your F. Then the next one is you are you are using F. F. You know, you are calculating April. So April is number four. Really. April number four. So your F T will be number three. Focus number three. You are using thirty eight point eight five for your calculation. So my F T will be thirty eight point five. 
Uh, no, it's not 38.5. You are April number four. You, you are in April. You're focusing for April. So April F4 here. So how you get 40.05? Huh? You F4, you F4 equal to alpha D3 plus one minus alpha F3. Your alpha is 0 0.5. Yes, D3 sir. is 41. Yep. So 0 0.5, F3 is 38.5. How you get, how you get 40.5? 41, right, sir. Because 0 0.5, then I times with 41. Okay. Then plus 1 minus 0 0.5 times with 40. You F3 is 40? F3 is 41. Are you sure it's 41? You know, understand what is FT or not? FT is F3, right, sir? F3 is what? F3 is demand or forecast? Uh, forecast. So where is forecast? This column is what? Oh, okay, okay. Thirty nine point seven five, sir. Oh. Okay, sir. So twenty nine point seven five. Then what is your trend? Trend is. Okay, and there is a reason why I stopped so long for a long stop for this this uh, example number four. Huh? So there's no reason you don't know how to answer in your past or final exam. Huh? Very obvious, obvious tips already. Yeah. Uh, zero point six nine, sir. Okay, correct. Zero point six nine. What is your AF? Oh, uh, it's um. Okay, the next one, uh, uh next one is who, uh, Sarini, uh, is it? 40.44, sir. Correct, 40.44. Okay, the next one, is it Sarini? Man, Emma, May. Sarini, are you there? Yes, sir, yes, sir. You are doing uh, May, man, right? uh, May forecast, right? Is all right? Okay, so I do it. Next one, Nevin. Eh? Nevin, you're doing June. Eh? Nevin, you there? Calling Nevin. Calling Nevin, Sean.
So I need what is your numbers for me? Uh, forecast F is 39. How you get 39? Uh, 0 0.5 times 37. Plus how, you, how you get your forecast number 5? You tell me how you get forecast number 5. Zero point five times thirty seven plus zero point five. You are doing me, right? Yes. So your F five is what? Forty five. What is the, What is the number here? How you get oh. forty five? Explain. Oh no no. We... I ask you guys to, to copy formula just now, right? <clears throat> don't press on my hot button. Eh? When I ask you to do something you don't do. Nevin, are you there? Yes, Calling sir. Nevin. Yeah. Stand by for June. Okay. Sorry, what is your F5 value? Zero point five five times thirty-seven plus zero point five times thirty-seven month of for the May. Your friend already tell you the value for April already. Sarini, can you can you repeat your answer for your formula? What uh, is the formula zero. for? Now, what is the general equation for your calculation? Oh. Can you tell the class? F three plus one equals. Are you doing F three? Yeah. You're doing month of May, right? Yeah. Month of May is what forecast? Focus 6. Hello, are you good in numbers or not? This is demand number 1, demand number 2, demand number 3, demand number 4, demand number 5, demand number 6, demand number 7. Focus 1, focus 2, focus 3, focus 4, focus 5, focus 6, focus 7. Do I need to continue? Trend 1, trend 2, trend 3, trend 4, trend 5, AF1, AF2, AF3. You are doing month number 5. What is your forecast? Forecast number what? Sorry, Ni. Five. So what is your general equation? F5. F5 equal what? 0 0.5. What is your demand number? 45. No, what is D what? D5. D4. D4. What is your D4? 37. Okay. 1 minus alpha, what is this? Focus what? 5. You are doing 5. You are doing 5, but here this is still 5. 4. Ah, so? Yes, what is the answer?
Uh, those if you're fast, uh, you can do the rest. Uh. Uh, so one question. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so for the trend, is it possible to get negative? Uh, trend, no, because as you can see the equation, right? So uh, Sarini, I already, I already give you how to do already. What is the number? If you see at the trend, trend, right? So trend here. So trend is one minus beta. Beta is 0.5. So here is positive value. The trend value, you will, you will always get a uh, positive trend value, right? Correct. Yeah. So yes. okay. this one also same. If you forecast the previous forecast value, you see minus this one. So yeah. But don't be surprised. Uh, it might it might have. Uh, uh, but so far, the question that I, I asked, so far no negative value. Okay, so Rainy, what is the forecast number five? 38. 38. 38 point, how many? 38. Your answer is 38.38. Yeah. 38.38 something. What is behind the what is the three decimal place answer? Thirty-eight point what? Three what? Three seven what? Oh, it's a 37.75. Okay, let's, let's ask the whole class to calculate the calculator for you. Okay. Sarini is doing uh, May of uh, forecast number five. So F5 equal to alpha. D4 plus 1 minus alpha F4. Alpha is 0 0.5. <clears throat> what is your D4? D4 is 30, 37 plus 1 minus alpha 0 0.5. What is your F4? Previous, previous, 39 uh, yeah, 39.75. So Sarini, can you press a calculator for the class? What is 0 0.5 times 37 plus 0 0.5 times 39.75? What is the fourth decimal place? There's a reason why I so uh, I so particular about decimal place uh, because one one wrong decimal place will snowball. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so you can use thirty eight point three three eight. Yeah. Okay. Three eight or yeah. Because it's point five, so it's a three eight point three seven five. Right. Okay. Uh, this is also because of the previous, your friend already rounded up uh, for April. Huh? Okay, so we have the forecast for month number five. What is your trend number? Sorry, Ni. Okay, in this case, I will use, in this case, uh, I will use, uh, you can use 39.7, sorry, uh, for F5. 
seven, okay, or three eight point three eight, ah, three eight point three eight, okay, because I'm calculating from Excel file, so uh, my numbers will be a little bit uh, different from yours, eh? Okay, what is your trend value, Varini? Again, ignore this statement from the second row onwards. This is just to kick start. Sorry, what is your numbers for your month number five? Wait, so calculating. Sorry, month number five, what is the T number? T number what? Five. Okay. So sorry, what is your numbers? T4, uh, sorry, T5 equal. What is the beta value? 0.3. How you get 0.3? Uh, yeah, okay, correct, 0.3. This one? F what? F4, F5. F5, so F5 is what? 38.38. Okay, minus F, F what? F4. F4, so F4 is 39 point something, right? Plus one minus beta, what is your T4? Uh, sorry, what is your T4? Uh... Guru, you want to tell your friend what is T4? Forty point four four. Your T4 how become forty point four four? Yeah, the the final answer is thirty point uh forty point four four. The T4 value is what, uh, sorry, your, your, this one? 0 0.6. 0 0.69, eh? Okay, all right. So I'll let, sorry, me pass, okay? So the next one, uh, month of June, month of June uh, will be Nevin. So month of June, uh, Nevin, what is your forecast for June? 41.68, sir. Correct. What is your trend? 1.041. Uh, Cor correct. Adjusted forecast? 42.72, sir. Okay, correct. All right. So, okay, good job, Nevin. Uh, Ruben, are you there? Yes, I'm here, sir. Okay, Wait, uh, Ruben, you saw for June? I know we need to know what is B6. Uh, sorry. Uh, Ruben, you saw for June, right? Uh, sorry, sorry, July, sorry. July, July, sorry. Yeah, July. Okay, what is the forecast for July? Or maybe... So the, it's... Uh, uh, forecast can, forecast yeah. for June is 41.68, right? 41.68, correct. Uh, so what is the forecast on. for... Or July.
those you already finished, you can uh, you can uh, you can do the rest. Uh. you can uh, just cross check the answer of your classmate. So is it 45.84? Correct. What is the trend? What is the trend value for July? Uh, so, yeah, go ahead. What is your answer for trend? Um, yeah, can I ask? So, can I ask Navin what is P6? What is what? P6, sir. P6. Uh, 1.04. The next person, stand by, uh, Harry Prasad, stand by. Uh, 0 0.5 horn 5, sir. P7. 0 point? 5 horn 5. How you get 0 0.1 one five one uh, something? No, sir, 5.5. Yeah, how you get that one? Can you tell me how you get that one? Uh, 0 0 0 0.3. 0.3. Uh-huh, then this one? F7 minus F6. Yeah, so what is your F7? Uh, 45.84. Okay, so what is your F6? 41.68. Correct. Then this one, okay, T, T6, T6 are you? T6. 1.04. Yeah, 1 1.04. So your trend for July will be? Wait, so I'm recalculating. It, it cannot less than 1.5. So Harry Prasad, you, you can start calculating for your month already, yeah? So you already have the... Yeah, done. One, okay. one point? Uh, so trend is 1.971. Correct. Okay. So the rest is just add up this one. Huh? This one, add this one, you get this one. Okay. Important, you know how to find this one and this one. Because this, this row or this column, you just add up the number. This one plus this one, you get this one. Okay. So August... August, uh, Prasad, is it Prasad? Sorry, yeah. Uh, uh, for yeah, the forecast, Prasad. it's 44.43. Forecast for August, 4.43, okay. My answer is 4.42, but okay, 4.43 is okay. Trend? Trend is 0 0.96. Uh, okay, uh, my answer is 0 0.95, but 96 is okay. Okay, so then, you add up, you get... 45.39. Okay, 45.39. Okay, all right. So uh, you guys need to be careful on the decimal place, huh? um, because as you round up, the error will, you will see the error will going to go up over this side, yeah? Okay. Next September, September will be Muti. Muti, are you ready? Uh, yes, doctor. 
Okay, so September, the forecast will be? 45.71. Correct. What is the trend? 1.057. Okay, adjusted? 46.77. Okay, correct. All right, so I've got one, one, uh, one round, a very detailed round uh, in this class. So no reason you guys don't know how to do in your tests and also your final exam. Eh? Okay. Uh, one one thing is that uh, the formula won't be given, so you need to somehow memorize before the exam. Right. So I give you all the value here, so you can see in my slides later on. So all the numbers you just add up according to the formula. So basically, three formula: one is for forecast, one is for trend, uh, and then one for adjusted. Basically, you find uh, your find your trend. Then you find your uh, sorry, find your forecast, find your trend. Then you, uh, doing your calculation for uh, adjusted. Huh? so basically this one plus this one equal to this one. Huh? And this one you need to do until one more month, uh, December, and then do January. Yeah. Huh? So this is the forecast for the next uh next cycle, right? So um, the original data is from January to December. So you need to forecast for one month ahead. Yeah? So you can see, um, you, if you read the question carefully, usually when you do forecasting, they are looking for the next month um, value. So um, in test or final exam, if the question give you, for example, February until August, for example, uh, February until August, the question actually want to know what is going to happen in September. Just let you know uh, the, the idea is that it's not necessarily start with January, but if the raw data, let's say, start from July until November, or maybe May until November, the question actually intended to ask you December data. Okay, so when you build table, prepare one more one more row for the next month, and then you calculate. Okay, so when you get all these. Um, you can actually plot graph, but in exam, uh, because plotting graph is is you don't have the sufficient tools uh, for to help you. Uh, in fact, in the exam.net, there is a tools called uh, a plotting graph that that one, but it will take a lot of time to key in all this number. But anyway, um, in your final exam or test, there won't be any plotting graph uh, exercise inside there, but it will come up to the table form. Okay, so again, be careful when you calculate because it will snowball to the next row numbers. Uh, so if you done one mistake, uh, I still can tolerate 0 .00, uh, 0 0.001 error, but if it's more than one decimal place error, then it consider wrong already, uh, or consider wrong. So always check. Uh, it's good to calculate until the third decimal place or uh, two decimal place. It's more uh, safer in that way. Uh, doctor, for example, yes. the last one, the 13, uh, we have 53.61, right? Uh, which one? The forecast uh, for 13 sorry. January. Uh, ah, beside one, yeah, that, yeah, 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 okay. Uh, it's 53.61. Uh, so if let's say we get 53.67, it's okay. Uh, 67 is a little bit it depends if you if the if the error here already add up then it's still reasonable to get up to seven like you say it's still it's still reasonable but it it, it won't be uh 53.9 something it, it won't okay. be more than uh 30 percent of the the answer here okay, okay. yeah right so uh in our in our marking scheme they 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 there is a there is a torrent for us to to pray around because uh, there, there is a decimal place here, okay? So always check your your decimal place. Huh? Okay, so when you plot the graph, uh, as you can see here, you transfer the data that you plot. You plot demand or the forecast number versus period or month, okay? So as you can see, we start with the raw data, the raw data column, plot up and down. This one you can done using Excel very fast. Um, if you have Excel, then you just 
key in the formula in the Excel cell there. Then you just drag and then uh, you you click uh, generate uh, graph and select the correct column. You will generate now. So you can see the raw and you see the adjusted forecast beta over here, the red line and the uh, forecast alpha 0.5 just now. Earlier in exercise three, you do alpha 0.3 and 0.5, but we choose 0.5 because it's more nearer to the uh, true data. But now you do adjusted exponential, you get one more graph. Uh, this one right? adjusted with the beta 0.3, which is the red color. So as you can see, you compare to the exponential smooth and adjusted exponential. You see that these two lines adjusted will be a little bit more nearer to the raw data. However, he got some weaknesses. Um, it will, you see the peak here, it will not able to pick up the, the peak here. You see this, this dot to this dot is supposed to go up but uh, it's a bit a bit slow, huh? but however, you can see with the adjusted, it get a little bit nearer to the to the raw data there. Yeah. Okay. So it means if if the lines is near to the near to the raw data, it means that you are doing a very good forecasting. Huh? Okay, let's uh okay, we go for a few more slides, then we, we call it a day, right? So we continue with the linear trend line also under time series method. Previously we look at a loss of equation to do. Now we look at linear equation to smooth out the calculation. Now you are look at linear equation y equal to mx plus c. But in this module, we use y equal to a plus bx. So basically, if you're good in mathematics, uh, graph plotting, y equal to mx plus c. As you can see here, this is m. m is the gradient of your linear line, either positive, negative, or zero. Um, a is the intersection of the line to the y-axis. Okay. So there is a calculation for A and B. Let me just copy. There's a fixed uh, uh, formula for A and B. So B will be sum of AX minus N. X bar means the average of X value y bar will be average of y value so in some textbook in some textbook uh, if you look at the equation they will join the x y with the bar together but i break them away together just to for clarity yeah? uh, just to for clarity so that uh, when you look at the equation you know uh, what is x bar and y bar in some textbook they join these two together with single line so it might a little bit confusing for some of you, right? So divided by x sum of x square minus n x bar square. So basically, if you want to find b, you need to use x multiplied by y. One column means you need to build a table. We're using the x and y value. x multiplied by y, you get you create one value, uh, one column. And then you need the average value for your x means you x column at the uh, at the down there you find the average of x, y value at the down there you find average of y, and then you find what is the x square value. You need to take the x x value squared it minus n x average square. Okay, this is the equation to calculate b. For linear trend line, what is the a? a equal to y bar. y bar means average of your y minus b, and your x bar means average of your x. 
what is B? B is from this equation. Okay, so your A and B actually they are interlinked. So you calculate B value first, then you substitute inside this A equation to calculate what is your A. Then you put inside there as general equation for the smoothing line. Okay. So basically is the more complex one is your B value. B, A, then you substitute your B, A inside there. Okay. So I'll show you one example for this one. Okay, so let's uh, oh yeah, apologize for these two values. I forget to hide them. So you will use the same data again from this company and then the same value that you calculate. Right? So uh, this is a very, very small value here, but uh, you can see it when you download my slides later. Huh? But anyway, this is the raw data that we cover just now. Right? All of you contribute to the numbers just now. All right? So we will use this data and then we will build a new table to calculate. So based on this formula, you need X value, you need Y value, you need X average value, Y average value, X square value, and X bar square value. So you build a table. You build a table. So after you've done this one, you build one table. So you have table. Uh, this, this table is called least square calculation. Uh, least square calculation, you have X value. X represent your month or period, right? January is one, February is two, and so on. Or you can you can put it as uh, yeah, as numbers, right? Item number one, item number two, uh, or season one, season two, season three, right? Sorry, for this this method is not suitable for season, right? Uh, for example, week one, week two, week three, uh, and so on. Okay. Then Y is your demand. So in this table is the time and demand. Time is for X, Y is for demand. Then you know that from your calculation, you need to find X, Y, you need to find X square. And below there, I think you have this table also in your tutorial handouts. So I, I just blank out the, the numbers here. So you find the total number of X, you have 12 unit, uh, 12 uh, item there, you find the average of X, you add all the X uh, Y together, you get total of Y, get the average, because you have 12 data here, get the average, then you use the Excel, if you have Excel, you, know, you just multiply, so I just done the first one for you, X Y is one, is it, uh, Sorry, uh, I think I key in the wrong number here. It's not 33, it's 37. Okay, I key in the wrong number here. It's 37, not, not 33. Okay, so then you square, okay, how come the number is this? Ah, okay, so you square the x, x is one, so you square it, get one. Typo error here, take note, typo error. It's not 23, but 37. Okay, so the, you build the table using Excel, you just drag, drag, okay? Uh, drag means, uh, you drag the Excel means it's copy the formula that you've done for the first one. You drag, then you, you sum the number, sum the number, you put in the calculation sheet. Okay. Okay, you find sum of x, sum of y, sum of x, y, sum of x squared 2. Okay, this one, I, I leave it as your homework, okay? Uh, so they, they, there's nothing uh, very complex calculation here. This, uh, as long as you understand the reason I, I give you this table is we want to extract some information for calculation. Okay. Okay, you get this, all this value. We calculate what is A, what is B. We calculate the B first. So I have all these uh, value I extract from here. So to find the average, you take all the X divided by 12, you get 6.5. To get Y, 
average is 46.42. You add all these column, all these number together, divided by 12, get 46 point something. So you have this value. Where is this value? This one. What is this value? Calculated already. What is this value? Calculated already. What is N? N is the number of data you have. You have 12. What is the sum of x square? Sum of x square is this column, this one. What is n? Again, 12. What is the uh, x, x bar square? This one square. You find your b, substitute inside there. b is 1.72. You substitute inside there. You have your y bar, right? Uh, y average, uh, y mean, or uh, y average. Where did this one? Minus b, you calculate here already. b is 1.72, x bar is this one. You get one value, 35.2. So you have a and b, substitute inside here. You get one line to plot in the graph. Okay, so basically just find what is your a and b. Substitute inside here. Okay, this is a linear equation. Huh? Y equal to mx plus c. Then you generate the forecast. You generate the forecast value uh, for this demand. So when you plot graph, you can see the actual is the blue color dot. But when you do linear trend line, basically when you linear trend line means there is a straight line from beginning until the end. You will see that uh, you can see this one as a trend. Okay, this is a trend line. Not forecast, uh, it's a trend line. Trend either going up, stagnant, or go down. Okay, so if you have a stagnant means you don't have x here, x zero. Means y equal to a fixed value. You have a straight line, horizontal means horizontal trend, means the, 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 the demand stagnant. Okay, but in real life, you won't get stagnant uh, demand. Something wrong with the data. Okay. So this is the the formula to find the trend of that particular activity. Huh? So this is going up. As you can see, it's going up. It's a positive trend activities. Okay. The rest you can read from the from the slides. Yeah. Only the disadvantages is to it will it will it will pass by all the all the down and up. Okay, it will just pick the average line, average value to pass through. Huh? So this line, when you have this line, you can forecast using this trend line, you can forecast for the next month, uh, next month or next next three months or any any months that you want, because you are you're looking back to the data you have. And in the long run, this one is very good in the long run for forecasting. Uh, you need to have a very a broad data so you can see whether it's going up or going down. So let's say you already get the y equal to a plus bx. So if you want to find what is the forecast for the 13 month, in this case you calculate 12 month, you forecast 13 month. So 13 months, you just substitute your x as 13, you'll get 57.56 service call for next month, for month of 13. This is how you estimate. Can you estimate the, the next month number 14 means February? Yes, we just substitute 14 over here. Means point number 14 on the graph. Because all this, all this line, how you construct this line is using point number 1 until point number 12. And then you construct this uh, relationship. Okay. Or in Excel, when you plot graph, it's called trend line. There's a, there's a function you can click when you plug in all these num all these uh, dot here 
then you click right click you click generate thread line this is the function used in excel all right i think we stop here and uh, i will see you guys on wednesday all right and uh, wednesday we will conclude um, chapter four okay um, i will stop the recording any questions so far?